Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I imagine that you are here for one of maybe a few reasons. You might be thinking about your talent, your people, and you're trying to think about how do I actually make sure they have the skills to ensure that our business and our teams can continue to move forward. Or you might be thinking about how do I retain talent and attract talent. And then obviously there's been tons of talk about Gen AI. And you might be thinking, what is the impact to my business going to be with AI? How do I make sure that our teams have the skills that they need for the future? The World Economic Forum says that 40% uh, of the tasks and skills that we have today will be obsolete in the next two years. That's pretty fast. So you're probably pretty worried about that. You know, what is it going to mean for the roles that we have? How are we going to scale? Um, and given that context around rapid technology change, um, you know, trying to find the right talent in the market, you're probably really thinking about how do I make sure that I can continue to move my business forward. So I believe that building a learning culture is really key to being able to, to solve for all of these problems, for, to be able to make sure you future-proof your teams and your company. My name is Aaron Rifkin. Um, I lead cloud learning services, so we're responsible for all of the technical training and certification for Google Cloud. We train customers, partners, our broad, re broad reach audiences across developers, uh, students. We think about our future workforce. And I'm gonna spend the next 30 or so minutes talking to you about what does it mean to build a learning culture. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about um, how we do that at Google and hopefully share some best practices with all of you. But I want to start out with some data, just to set the stage. So the average lifespan of a skill is about five years. And for software developers, it's 12 to 18 months. That's pretty fast. In, by 2030, they believe that 85 million jobs are going to go unfilled because the skills are not in the market. And that's about eight and a half trillion dollars in potential for unrealized revenue. Think about the impact that has on your company, let alone your customers and your partners. And then we've got Gen AI, which obviously once in a generation technology change that's going to impact so many things. And I don't think anybody really has the answers on where that's gonna go and what's actually going to happen because of that. So that's why at Google Cloud, we are Really, we think it's important not just to train our existing customers, but we have to think about the future workforce because we need to ensure that the skills are in the market so that all of you are able to hire the talent that you need. So in our short time together, I'm going to cover what does a learning culture mean? What do we, what do we mean by that? I'm going to tell you some examples of things that we do at Google and how we embed that learning culture at Google broadly. And then I'm going to share some tips and tricks um, that will, little anecdotes from my career, but also things that I actually crowdsource from my team who work directly with uh, many of you. And then hopefully we'll have some time for questions, but also I think it's a good opportunity to share best practices. So if you are doing things that are working really well on your teams, we'd love to hear them, share that knowledge. Does that sound good? Sweet. All right, so what do we mean by a learning culture? I thought, you know, given the Gen AI conversation, I, I would be remiss if we didn't ask Gemini. So this is, what Gemini, uh, this is what Gemini told us. But in my words, having a learning culture is about a shared set of values and beliefs that learning is important, that creating talent is so important that you're going to invest in it and you're going to make time for it. Because we know that if we're able to foster growth with our employees, it will not only help them continue to grow, but it is going to help them drive innovation for all of you and help drive their careers, and they'll stay engaged. And I know this is really probably top of mind for a lot of people because if you think about it, um, we used to have these multi-year launch cycles, so you had plenty of time to learn. And with the dawn of the cloud, we were launching new features and new products. You could do that almost daily, and that meant the skills expire really fast. So thinking about how we do that in this dynamic world and making sure that we keep our teams ahead of the curve is really important. So I'm going to talk about how we do this at Google. We have a ton of product areas, we call them PAs, that are very different from each other. So if you think about it, YouTube is very different from cloud, which is very different from our ads business. 
But one thing that is consistent is our belief in learning and how we want to embed that in what we do every day. So I'm going to share a little bit about that in the context of how of the mission for our L&D Council, our Learning and Development Council. So this is the mission here. And I think the key thing to take away is that we believe that we have to create world-class experiences. They need to provide growth opportunities um, for each individual. And where we can have common practices within our learning, we do, but sometimes teams need the unique things. You know, how the t what their OKRs are, or the skills that they need, um, the customers that they serve may be different. And so the way that you might want to think about that could be unique. So share where you can, be specific where you need to. And the philosophy is based on five key things. We believe, and I'm gonna share a little bit about these, and then I'm gonna give you some examples and dive a little bit deeper. We believe that learning happens in real life. I'm sure many of you will have a tight deadline, something new happens, Gen AI pops up out of nowhere, and now you have to think about learning something on the fly in your job. That's happening in real life. But learning's also personal. How people like to learn, the what, the why, the when behind it, it's really about your individual experience and what you're trying to accomplish. It's about your personal motivation. And then learning is social. We hear from Googlers all the time that they learn from each other by asking questions, working on a project, you know, spending time with people who have a different experience, different background, diversity of experience. And then um, learning is all around, which actually is my very favorite one from Google because there's some really funny things that we do around that. But you have to make sure that it's all around. It's available in different formats in different ways. It's not necessarily about a book or a video um, or a, a training module. Um, but it is just about how do you kind of have that around the environment. And then learning is a process. And learning as a process is more about how, like, my team or a learning and development team do. So where you have a much more formal learning agenda that you're going to do that's going to help people not just learn but also um, apply that knowledge. Okay, so we're going to talk about each one of these. And you may or may not be familiar with this 70-20-10 rule. So 70% is that on-the-job experience. So that's where you have a tight deadline. You just got to get on with it and figure it out. Um, you know, I can think about in a previous role where we had to build a, a POC. and We weren't going to make the date. And I went to the engineer and I said, what can I do to help? And he goes, I need help coding the front end. I don't know how to code. I'm not a coder. But I'm like, let me help. So I Googled it. I cursed a lot, seriously, but I figured it out, and I helped code it, and we made the deadline because we all worked together to do it, and I got a new skill out of it. So when we think about on-the-job experience um, at Google, we have this concept of 20% projects. And 20% projects, they really are informal. It could be that a team has a tight deadline, or they need to put more bodies on it, or they need some additional skills, or it may just be like a passion area for an individual but you have an opportunity to go and actually work on something with 20% of your time that's helping you build some skills, it's helping you network, um, but it's pretty informal. Uh, it's a win-win. They get something, a new skill out of it, they build their network, they have new things that they can add to their performance review and, they, and maybe prep for a promotion, um, and as a team, you get some extra capacity. So it's, it's a pretty good opportunity. And then 20% is informal learning. And we have a couple of different examples of that um, that I think are pretty cool. So um, one is called a blameless retrospective. I'm sure you all know what a retrospective is. We do them very often. But one of the practices at Google is, how do we actually bring people together to learn? It could be positive experience. It doesn't have to be that there was an outage or something went wrong or you missed a deadline. Um, but what worked well? What didn't? What do we want to think about differently for the future? And it's blameless. Because if we create an environment where people can take risks and they can learn from failure, everybody, I mean, everybody learns from failure. I think all of you can probably think of an example in your career where you made a mistake, but you took that away and it, it really like ingrained in you. Maybe you helped somebody else because of that. Um, and then we have these things called bungee, which was a new concept to me coming to Google. So a bungee is pretty interesting because it is, if you have somebody who's going on a medical leave or a maternity or paternity leave, 
and you have a critical role that they were filling. You can open a bungee, which is a temporary opportunity for somebody across Google to be able to apply and step in for that period of time. So I'll give you an example that I have in my team right now. My chief of staff, we homework strategy and operations, my chief of staff had an opportunity to go into a level higher role, leading a much larger team, reporting directly to the COO for Google Cloud go-to-market. Huge opportunity for him. So he went to step into that because somebody was on maternity leave. He's building his network, he's getting closer to the sales teams, he's cutting his teeth on some new skills on the job right then and there. And I was able to open a bungee that let me get an amazing candidate from somewhere else in the team who got to step up into a level higher role and bring their skills and knowledge from the consulting practice and from technical account management into our team where they can now learn about the learning business. And it's a win-win for everybody. So it's just a really neat opportunity. And then you've got 10%, which is formal learning. And those are the programs like what my team does around training and certification. I'll give you two examples from Google. We have a go-to-market leadership program, and it's looking at the next generation of senior talent across the business. It's a two-year cohort where there is some formal and some informal learning. They get leadership training, they may get some technical training, but they get to network with each other and they get to meet with senior leaders. So it's a great opportunity to do that and actually cultivate the next generation of leaders within the organization. And then we have something on the technical side cloud, called Cloud Technical Residence, CTR. It's a nine month rotational program where for three months they do formal classroom training and then they get to do a rotation through a variety of different roles across Google Cloud um, and the go-to-market organization so they can learn new skills. So that three months they may be spending time learning about technical validation. They could be building demos. They might be doing scalable tools. There's a number of different skills that they might be learning. And when they go into that rotation, they're in a super safe environment with experts all around them to help them thrive. It's been a huge retention opportunity for us. We've been able to retain a ton of amazing talent and help people move around the business. So they get exposure to all these different areas and bring that goodness with them into their new role. And then learning is personal. You know, I said that it's about motivation. You know, what is your motivation for learning or an individual's motivation? The what, the when, the how, the why, that's all personal. And so, you know, one of the things that I think we commonly see and you may have experienced is sometimes individuals believe that their managers are responsible for this, but actually it's really the responsibility of the individual. As managers we have to, and leaders, we have to create space for those conversations. We have to have the career discussions um, so that people can do that. And then we have to create the space for people to be able to have that time to learn and programs and opportunities to enable those things. So for at Google, we have a, a platform called Grow. There's tons of training out there that people have access to. It's kind of self-directed. They can take whatever they want. There's a variety of different topics from technical to non-technical um, that let them go and do that. But really, I think the key here is having those career discussions and helping pe people set the stage for what they might want to do. One of the ways that I've always talked to people about this from a career perspective is, Many of you probably have, we call them role, prof role profiles at Google, um, but it's like, what is expected at level and role? I oftentimes tell people or tell managers, take that, put it in a spreadsheet, put that in sheets. Mark down, what do you think you did well there? Where do you think you have your gaps? And kind of help manager and, and employee come up with a plan for how they're gonna help get those things, whether it's through on-the-job activities or it's through some type of formal learning. And then learning is social. We hear this all the time. Peer-driven learning is really important. So there's a few different examples of how we do this at Google. We have a program called G2G, Google to Google. And Google to Google has thousands of Googlers all over the globe that are sharing their knowledge with other Googlers. It can be anything from providing mentorships to thinking about how do you actually um, do team building, to wellness and well-being. I mean, there's a zillion topics that are out there. And people put their slide decks out there. They put out instructor guides for them. But they also volunteer their own time if you want it, whether it's virtual or it's in a local office. I actually leveraged this for my last leadership team offsite, and I met an awesome person in ads who was a veteran hire, got to learn about his story, you know, made some connections. It was really interesting, and he's super passionate about the things that we do, maybe a future employee on my team. 
And then we have things like our ERGs, the employee resource groups, which are you know, Google sponsored. And those are focused around diversity and inclusion. They're empowering um, a set of folks from an underrepresented group to be able to connect, learn, and grow together, but also to help support allies across the company. There's tons of programs out there like that at Google um, and a lot of opportunities for learning and growth. And then we have TechCon. And TechCon is an internal conference, which is about how do we help people grow technical skills. So we have subject matter experts from all over that come. They teach uh, whatever their expertise is to the audience. And then there are opportunities for them to actually solve challenging problems together. So it's you learn, and then you really dive in together to work through whatever's happening in your space or whatever topic area uh, they're teaching. And the neat thing is, these don't really cost a lot to be able to set up. I mean, they're kind of homegrown communities once you get them going. So, you know, it really just takes a spark, it takes a platform, it takes, you know, people wanting to help. And I think you'll find that more often than not, people are, they want to share, their, they want to share the knowledge that they have with each other. And then learning is all around. And this is my favorite one at Google because I thought I was going to die when I saw this the first time. Um, you can go to any bathroom in a Google office and you will find something like this on the wall in the stalls, <laughs> on the walls of the bathrooms. Um, it's called learning on the loo. And if you're in a technical building, there's coding on the can, there's testing on the toilet. <laughs> so people will go in and take pictures of them, but they also send them out a newsletter, but it's kind of a funny thing. And so when we say learning should be everywhere, we actually mean that. <laughs> And then learning is a process. And this is where those formal programs come in. It could be something that we do. You know, we have our advanced solutions labs. We have um, training we actually just did called Launchpad around how do we help women get access to technology and be able to build, get certified um, so we can create gender equity. You know, programs that actually help drive those things. Or your internal L&D programs. They might be doing compliance training or something like that. But in these types of programs, we believe that you have to acquire net new knowledge, but then you need to be able to apply that knowledge. And so you can do that through a number of different ways, but it's actually getting people focused on a real world scenario within that learning. It's are we meeting the learning objectives by one, teaching it, and then can they actually apply it? And then there are higher level things you can do. You can get certified, you can get a certificate, just depends on what those programs uh, are, what the goal of those programs are. So I'll show you a little bit about how we do that actually in Google Cloud if you haven't uh, experienced it today. So my team's mission is that we want to enable anyone, anywhere, to gain access to the skills that they need on Google Cloud to succeed. Pretty simple. And we believe that the best way to do that is hands-on. So we have a learning platform that not only will teach you a technical topic, but it will give you hands-on labs that get you super deep in the technology right away. And then one of the things that we do to make sure we can validate those skills is we have this concept of skill badges. And our skill badges are a series of labs, and the labs generally are like, here's the instructions, and you go hands-on, you do the thing. But the skill badge actually has a challenge lab, and that challenge lab is just a scenario. We give you a scenario, we give you essentially an empty environment, and we ask you to go and do it. Can you actually apply that skill? And these things are more and more important because now we're moving to the skills-based hiring world because the skills are expiring so fast. And you want to know when you're hiring talent, do they actually have the skills? Or you want to know, does my team have the skills? And this is a great way to do that. But we also know it dry, like incentivizes people. They get super excited about it. So for those who took a skill badge, 78% said they were going to do it again in the next six months. And 74% were like, I'm going to actually spend more time. I'm going to get certified, which is you know, higher stakes opportunity for you to go and do that and build your career. So we've defined what we mean by learning culture. We talked a little bit about how Google does it. Um, now I'm going to share some tips and tricks. And I actually crowdsource some of these from my team also because they talk to customers every day. So what do we think that you know, is the underpinnings of what's necessary to make this work? You have to make learning a priority. I mean, culture starts at the top. We all know that. And there's the saying, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So we have to be able to think about how do we make learning a priority? How do we show up in that way and drive that culture within our teams? How do we make space for it? Um, how do you embed it in the flow of work? How do you just make it part of the day-to-day? -day? Make it the norm. Encourage the sharing of knowledge across your teams. 
Um, when we think about that, you know, there's a saying that says, to teach is to learn twice. And I know that personally, and I know probably many of you will have some of these, this will make sense to all of you, but I, um, I, I'm a mountaineer. I like to climb hard things. I'm a glutton for punishment. I guess you'd say I play golf too, so that's definitely a glutton for punishment. But, um, you know, I mountaineered, and I taught myself how to mountaineer, and I also worked with a friend who had done it, and so you kind of, I learned by the flow of doing it. But then I started teaching mountaineering, and it really helped because I learned through the questions that people were asking to me. It made me think a little bit differently about how to articulate something. Or we ran into different challenges in the mountains when we were teaching that then taught me a new thing or a new way to handle a particular situation. And that's no different than teaching a technology. It cements the knowledge that you know you have when you have to think about how do I teach it to somebody else. At Google, we have this thing called G-Thanks. It's a recognition system. You have an opportunity to, you can send a kudos to somebody. Just as simple as saying thank you. Thank you for going out of your way to do X or Y. Or for managers, we're able to do peer bonuses. Or sorry, not uh, peer bonuses. We're able to do spot bonuses. So that we can send some extra money to say thank you. We really appreciate the effort that you did. And it's driving a behavior of recognition um, and support for people who are going out of their way to help make a difference in driving not only our culture of being helpful, but our culture of learning and helping each other. Some other examples of things that I have done in the past, some that we're going to do in my team now, um, we had a half day of learning. Every Wednesday for four hours, I blocked out from, I took it from my calendar and sent it to my whole team. We're going to invest four hours every month concerted to learn. And we got people to sign up to teach sessions. We also asked people, what do you want to learn? And put those out there so people could see what those topics were and they could sign up. And it created this awesome culture within the team. We ran a week of what we called Fix, Hack, Learn. We did bug fixes. We did a hackathon that was focused around our strategy so that we knew there was going to be time specific to our engineering team having the capacity to go and build those features. And then we did those learning opportunities, just like Half Day of Learn. And then during the pandemic, we added Connect, which I actually think is really still, is still true. We're all hybrid. You know? There's people who are in office, but we're also global. So how do you create those connection opportunities, speed connections, things like that, that let people find like-minded folks across your organization? Um, and then lead by example. So I told you about Launchpad for women. I don't, I'm not Google certified yet. We got, these, we got these awesome Launchpad for women folks in here right now. Woo! Um, but I took the training with them, and I'm going to get certified next week. And I'm trying to lead by example in that. We have a two plus one program. If you take two consecutive weeks off vacation, you get an extra week for learning. And you can use that however you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that in September and I'm gonna get certified in something else then. And then it's gotta be engaging. Uh, you can think about what this means, means for all of your teams, but um, we have some examples like Arcade, which is a gamified learning opportunity. But you can think about it. Is there a 30 day challenge you can do? Um, can you give prizes, swag, a mentorship session with a senior leader in your company. Something that people, what it was tangible that people want that would drive them, uh, doing leaderboards. But I encourage you not to mandate it because it becomes a check the box activity instead of an investment in your people. So think about what that means for you. Um, and then celebrate success. I mean, there's so much power in storytelling. So think about how you tell the story about how it positively impacted your team, your company, your customers, whatever it is, because you invested in that skilling effort for your team. Um, and then make it fun. You think about what that's like. I, there was some compliance training I took at a previous company that was super boring, and they made it into an episodic show, and people were super pumped to watch it every single year. So think about how you can do that. We have to think about how we respect people's time, make it short, make it easy, make it a lunch break style thing that they can go and do. You can use the games, something to incentivize people. Um, but think about community, because community is super key to learning. We saw that even with our launch pad for women. There's thousands of women that are just cheering each other on, supporting each other, giving tips on how to pass the certification, a number of things. And a bonus tip, Representation matters. Authenticity matters. Make sure the story you're telling or the things that you're asking your teams to do, that it resonates with a why for them. Um, and I think we're getting close on time. So I don't, I, I will give you this one example, but I do want to open it up for some questions. 
So this year, we were launching a new strategy for Google Cloud Consulting. And we didn't want to spend a ton of money. We have a huge global team. We had to think about how do we do this in a fun um, and interactive way. And so we brought people together across 30 sites globally. So most people didn't have to travel. It was just their, their local site. We taught the same content across all 30 sites. And we had people at those sites that had a variety of different roles, from teaching some of the topics to being joy makers to a number of different things. It was fun. They played with Legos to define the strategy. They, we did a talent show, a pitch off, if you will. And people rapped and did all kinds of things to show like what our story was, how did they tell the story around our strategy. But they gained new skills doing it, and they were able to connect with each other. So I'm not going to play the video because I'm not sure how much time we have. Oh, actually, it's giving me a countdown. What would you know? Um, maybe we do have time. I don't know how to play it, though. We'll see if it does it. Nope, it's not going to. OK. You'll have to leave that to your imagination. <laughs> but so there's some folks in here who attended it. So we could, we could definitely share it more. It was super, it was actually one of the coolest corporate type training things I think I've had an opportunity to do. And I told that to my boss, who is this guy right here. Um, but I started out talking about the referencing the lifespan of a skill. And so I think what he is saying here is actually really relevant. You know, building a uh, learning culture within your company isn't just an investment in ourselves. It's actually, and in our people, it's actually really important for the success of your company in the long run. I mean, it's really critical to help people get those skills. So if you're interested in continuing to learn more tips and tricks, or you want to hear more about what we're doing and how we're driving this culture with our customers, I'll leave this up for a minute so you have a second to snag it. Um, we have regular blog posts out here that talk about a variety of different topics, including community learning opportunities. Um, but my team's super pumped about learning in general, so all of us are happy to help you know, answer questions and, and help you think through how you might want to do this at your company.